you can see now if you. There we go. All right, so just a reminder to everybody, uh, we have started recording. We will, as I just said, be recording this. We'll be posting this online uh, on the, the page with, with the rest of the information here. So uh, you can always access this recording once again after the fact later. Uh, it'll take us a couple of days to get that online uh, just so that we can transcribe it, put on captioning and throw on uh, all of our accessibility features, but that'll get loaded online. And you can access that. We'll also record the next session coming up on May 29th as well. We'll post that online too. But welcome everybody. Thank you again for joining. This is a technical assistance uh, session specifically about House Bill 1100 and the Child Care Provider and Employee Retention Bonus Program. Uh, it is uh, that time where we start to talk about uh, collecting uh, remaining uh, information uh, for the program. And so today's conversation will be specifically about how you'll do that, when you'll do that, what that looks like, and what you can expect to see from the department both before that happens and after that happens and along the way. So with that, we'll dive right in. So as a reminder to everybody, the House Bill 1100, the Child Care Provider and Employee Retention Program is a one-time program established in law that uh, appropriates $16 million uh, for bonuses, uh, or uh, retention bonuses specifically, uh, for child care providers and their employees who are eligible. Eligibility for this program was defined by a number of different criteria, and some of that depended on when folks started uh, at the center. Um, for those who had been working on or before uh, June 30, of 2022, that'd be last June, um, there uh, was an hours uh, requirement as well as, of course, having uh, at that time or will have by the end of June upcoming uh, credential from the Maryland Child Care Credential Program. Similarly, uh, with regard to uh, those who are hired on or after July 1st, uh, you also have that requirement for the credential program, but in addition to that, uh, a commitment to and having been at now the center for at least six months. And so uh, a couple of notes for today, uh, I'm going to walk through uh, what we're talking about in terms of the administration, how you were going to start with um, Again, upcoming uh, dates uh, in the future, reporting timelines. I'm going to walk through how exactly you are going to complete those reports, when that's expected. Uh, I'm going to talk about what you need to be submitting with that, uh, and then uh, any follow ups, and then we'll open it up at the end for, for Q&A. We'll drop things in chat. I know chat's disabled right now. I'll enable that uh, shortly once we get to the question and answer portion of the session. So with that, everybody, uh, again, and, and having had the reminder of the program, uh, a couple notes. And, and the first one is, uh, you know, with the published guidance for the material, you know, we had noted that initial reporting would be due on or by June 1st, 2023. Uh, we will be extending that reporting deadline for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is uh, we've managed to consolidate the reporting from what was originally going to be two steps into one step to make that uh, easier easier for everybody. So uh, we've been able to get rid of what we were going to initially ask for on that June 1st piece. And so uh, I will, of course, email all of this out as well to everybody. But um, just know that uh, when we talk about this today, we'll be talking about a slightly different deadline in part because of that June 30th timeline, right? And so all of this circles back to two things. One, uh, the department needs to make sure uh, that all the awarded funds uh, to providers uh, were paid to the uh, people that generated that award. Uh, so if you listed an employee and MSD awarded funds based on a given employee, uh, MSD needs to make sure uh, via collecting documentation that you have paid that employee. Uh, and so, you know, these funds are not eligible to go to other employees um, and uh, we would need to, of course, collect that back uh, if that was not provided to those employees. And so this is an, a mechanism for you to tell us uh, at the conclusion of this program uh, whether uh, you've been able to award those, uh, provide that documentation and close things out. 
So uh, again, just a couple notes here, as I mentioned, and I, I keep kind of going back to this, that June 30th date. As a reminder, everybody, June 30th is the deadline to have received a credential from the Maryland Child Care Credential Program. Uh, as a regular course of the program, I mean, those typically take uh, at least 30 to 60 days to, to apply for. Uh, and so I would assume and hope and certainly expect by now that if staff hadn't done that, who had claimed eligibility for this, program uh, that they would have done that, right? Because if they're filing now uh, and have waited to do so until this time, uh, they may very well not get that in time, which would render them ineligible for the amount. And again, employees who are ineligible, either because uh, they did not um, receive their credential as required by law, uh, or who have otherwise uh, left the center, etc., cetera, uh, MSDE will invoice for those back. I'll walk through that uh, here sequentially. So first piece to note uh, again is um, today's conversation about reporting. And so I'm actually going to dive right into to the reporting tool. So what we'll be releasing uh, following um, the next session here on May 29th, so we're going to give everybody a chance to attend this the next one, and then I'll follow up with a, a written correspondence out to everybody. Uh, and just letting everybody know, here's the link uh, for everything that we're going to be talking about today, as well as a write up of everything uh, that we're also talking about today. But again, um, June 30th is the date by which uh, everybody would need to have um, their credentials. And so as part of the guidance, and we've had some of you reach out to say, well, you know, we're, we're uncomfortable awarding the bonus until the employees have received their credential. That is up to the 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 uh, each of you as a, as a provider. You don't need to do that. Uh, you are more than welcome to wait until you have that uh, proof from the, the employees or yourselves, if you're claiming yourself on the, the uh, attainment of the credential. Again, because it can be very hard to get that back if you award it uh, and then they don't end up getting that credential. Uh, but um, with the um, with that in mind, uh, what we'll be doing here is we will have a pretty extended reporting deadline throughout the summer to give you time to to make uh, to receive any of that information that you need from your staff. Uh, if you do still need that up through June thirtieth, uh, and so just so you know, the form we'll, ta we'll be talking about today will be due back to the department on or by July thirty first. So July thirty first is really the date you want to be thinking about here in terms of reporting. And what MSDE is going to be collecting from all of you is uh, a few pieces of information, and I'm actually going to use the form here. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to use this to walk us through exactly what we're going to be collecting here. So pardon me one second while I share my screen. OK, everybody. So as you can see on my screen here, uh, with regard to the reporting, uh, this is what the form uh, is going to look like that everybody will be uh, submitting uh, when you turn in your and reports. And again, what we're calling the report for this is really just documentation of employee payments. So uh, when you come into the form and you're only going to fill this out once, so again, as a reminder with this, when you are submitting your report, you should only submit one report per uh, EIN. So if you are a provider uh, with one EIN that operates multiple centers, uh, under that EIN, you're still going to submit one report. Uh, if you are a provider that has multiple EINs uh, for your different centers, you're going to submit a report for each of those. Uh, if you are a provider and you, you know, a small family provider, if you're reporting yourself, um, you know, or anything in between, uh, again, one form per uh, in total, right? You should only be submitting this once. A couple things on here should be pretty straightforward. First, you're always going to lead with your email address. This is because uh, you're going to get confirmation of this uh, if you want it. Uh, you'll notice when we get to the bottom here that you can ask to have a copy of your responses. And if you do, it's going to do a second check for your email address just to make sure. Uh, Next thing is going to be the provider EIN. So you want to provide the center's EIN, no dash, no hyphen. So just the numbers. So for example, if your employee EIN was one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, you would enter that without the dashes as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right? That's your tax ID number. Your provider license number is exactly that. It is not your provider ID, please. We're looking here for your active license number, your registration number from your current license. 
Similarly, you're going to put your provider name in here. OK, again, this should also be exactly what is on your license. So if you look at the license, who is your license issued to? Uh, is it your name? Is it the name of your center? Whatever that is, that's the name you want to fill out here. The next piece you're going to indicate here is the awarded staff. And so when I say awarded staff, so when the form here is asking for awarded staff, these are going to be the staff that you have paid, right? So this might include somebody for whom you received. So uh, just because you received money uh, for somebody, you applied for them, they might have left or otherwise gone from your center. Uh, you, maybe you didn't end up paying them because of that or they didn't get their credential. They might have been in their initial award from us, but that for the purposes of this, when we're asking for awarded staff, this is the list of all staff that you're reporting as part of this form for whom you're attaching that documentation showing your support, the support uh, of payment. What do we mean by supporting documentation? So what are we ultimately asking you for here? So first of all, on this list, you're going to put the name uh, of the staff here uh, and you can list them out uh, one by one. You can do them with a comma afterwards. It's really up to you. You just need to make sure to list the, the staff. I'll use my name here. So if it was Justin Dayhoff, Jane Doe and onward, right? You'll list the staff in here that you've awarded. On the next field here, you're going to put any non awarded staff. So these are staff for again for whom you might have received funds, but you may not have awarded those out to the employee for whatever reason. So for this one, we're asking you for two pieces of information. One, the employee's name and two, the reason. Jane Smith left the center prior to the receipt of funds. John Doe did not attain the required credential as a part of this program, right? Um, Justin Dayhoff. Um, well, I can't think of another reason at this moment, but that's what we're asking for here. Just name, reason it was not awarded. Next thing here, you are going to upload your files. And so for this, uh, we are going to, you have options uh, in terms of this will take any different types of file types you have, whether it's a PDF document because you scanned it or you or a picture document because you took a picture with your phone and you sent it to your email, whatever it might be. This takes uh, any type of file that you're looking to upload. What we're looking for here is for any this for every employee who you've included in awarded staff. You should also include a copy of either a pay stub or a check showing that those funds were provided to the eligible awarded personnel. You need to provide documentation for every personnel to whom you awarded it. Otherwise, the department will collect those funds. Last but not least, you check off the certifications. So you're going to go through and confirm that the information contained in this form is correct and true, and that you have the authority as a part of your center, either because you're the owner or because you've been you're uh, you know on the accounting team, you know whatever it might be. Uh, you, you're noted uh, certifying that you do have that authority to submit these this report for the provider. Your name and title, uh, and from there you're just going to be hitting submit. So again, this form is due July 31st. And on this form, you're going to indicate that you have indeed paid out the funds as intended or where not, whose funds you didn't award and why. And then you are going to provide the supporting documentation for this. With this form, you do not need to provide supporting documentation for funds associated with the hiring incentive portion of the award. And so if you received any funds uh, for new hires in 2022-2023 here, uh, for whom you have used those funds to, for example, uh, for some of the hiring incentives, for recruitment, etc., you don't have to include that here. However, uh, just as we put in the original in the grant uh, in the original grant information guidance, Still, the rules still exist. You do need to retain any documentation or receipts for that because these funds are subject to audit. And so uh, should and, and when the department conduct an audit, they will, may likely sample uh, those and request supporting documentation to make sure that what you have spent those funds on are in line with the award, right? Those are hiring incentives either for some of your initial staff salaries, training, zip recruiter, recruitment, whatever that might be. Uh, but that is not something that you need to report on this file. Ultimately, what we're looking to see here is for the funds you received, 
please confirm that you awarded them to the staff for whom was eligible, for whom they were intended, uh, and in the cases where you did not, let us know why and to whom. That's all we're looking to get here with this form. Again, this form will be due July 31st. Once the department collects this form, the department is going to take these data. It's going to take our internal records that we already have about uh, child care credentials, right? So you'll notice on here one thing we did not ask you for or ask your staff for is to submit to us uh, evidence of their child care credential attainment. We have those in our systems. We're not going to make you submit that. That's extra effort for you, extra time for you. We're not going to ask you to do that. Uh, I do want you to know out of transparency that we are checking that though. And so what we will be doing is we'll be taking these forms, these reports that you submit and reconciling those, comparing those to what we have on the original award list for everybody. The child care credential information that we have for those same individuals and the report you've made. Once we have done that, the department will reach out with any next steps if necessary for your center. If you have staff who have left or are on that non awarded list, uh, or if you have staff that you did award, but who were not ultimately eligible, the department will issue an invoice for those funds back. Uh, that would be late summer uh, into the fall. <laughs> Excuse me. I mentioned that timeline uh, and, and we won't go into that today uh, here specifically, but uh, because of remaining funds, uh, we will be reopening uh, applications uh, for new submissions. So if you have, if you had an error in your original application, if you've had new hires, whatever it may be, uh, you'll have a second opportunity to submit that. Again, still first come first serve, same application as last time, no changes there. Uh, and so you'll want it to, to uh, keep on the lookout for that. We'll get plenty of notice before we open that uh, in fairness, especially given the fact that it's a first come first serve program. But all of that to say, uh, when we do bonus round close out on this uh, initial round later this summer and early fall, that's when you can expect to receive those invoices. But this single form will constitute the data and reporting we need for the purposes of this program. With that, I'm going to open up the chat now for everybody. Uh, give me one second here. You are more than welcome to drop questions into the chat uh, and we'll respond to those uh, as they come in. The chat should be live now. So again, drop those into chat. Uh, we won't be calling on people uh, because of the volume of uh, individuals in the call today. Um, we've disabled mics and audio. So again, if you have questions, make sure you drop them right into chat. It's not even Q&A, just put them right in the regular old chat box. Uh, we have one employer EIN for multiple locations, but each location has a separate provider license number. So how do we submit? So again, as I said, even if you, so I have one EIN, right so with multiple centers you are going to want to include those here so provide the license number from your current active license number if you are a provider with one EIN and multiple sites under that provide the license number to which funds were awarded so for some of the big centers you know we talked to you we said hey who, who do you which site do you want to associate that with that's the license number that you put here uh Again, regarding credentialing, um, go ahead and reach out to the branch if you have a concern or if you believe all of the documents were properly submitted in time uh, and you are concerned, reach out directly to our credentialing team and feel free to see me, CC me, uh, and uh, can happily help support that as well. Is the next meeting the same as this meeting? It sure is. It sure is. It's going to be the exact same as this meeting. Can you confirm that we can use the hiring incentive funds to cover the employer taxes we are subject to when we pay out the awards? I can absolutely confirm that, and that is indeed an allowable use. Can we use the hiring incentive money also as a bonus to give out to the teachers? Yes, you certainly can. Hello, I didn't receive the check yet. Uh, so again, as we have indicated previously, you should be emailing grants.mste at maryland.gov if that's the case. Uh, you if the staff member is no longer here, as I said, we will invoice you. So there's nothing to send back. We will invoice you for that during grant round closeout. 
Uh, yes, this applies to everybody who received these funds. This is not limited to anybody uh, or any group. This is for any recipient of the House Bill 1100 child care provider and employee retention bonus program. Uh, no, staff have until June 30th to get their credential. You have until July 31st to submit this report. Uh, hi, if we have remaining funds, what can or what should we do with the funds we have for staff who either left or do not qualify? We will be invoicing for those funds back. There is nothing for you to do with them. You are, those are not allowed to be used for a different purpose. Again, uh, if the funds have not been used, uh, submit the form without any files uploaded. So if the funds have not been used, uh, and you have not awarded to anybody, uh, go ahead and please reach out to us because we probably have some additional questions or concerns that we should check on. Uh, I would imagine in all, most all cases, these funds should have been uh, provided at least to one employee. Uh, does the owner need to cut the check to self for proof? Yes, if the provide, great question. So if you're a family center, right, like you're you, doing amazing things as a provider of your center and you are and have received this award, uh, do as you cut that check for yourself, uh, make sure that you show us that. Or if you've done it as a part of your expanded your payroll, you can submit some sort of documentation that shows that you have paid that out accordingly to yourself as eligible for that. Uh, I have a plea pride through the pre-K credential through MSC's Teach Portal. Does this count as a credential needed? No, it does not. It has to be part of the Maryland Child Care Credential Program that is defined in the law for this. So that's why that is the program. Uh, this program is for child care centers and home child care as well. Uh, this is again, it's the same program. HB 1100 Child Care Provider and Employee Bonus Program is open to everybody. Credentialing needs to be done by June 30th, 2023. June 30th, 2023. What about staff that were left off? So if the staff was not included or approved, they do not need to be uh, included in this report. So you should only you only need to provide information about those who you ultimately received funds for. Uh, you do not need to include people who were not eligible or who are not awarded for whatever reason. This document will be sent out uh, following the May 29th session. Uh, so that way you'll have this for about two. The, this uh, reporting will be open for about uh, just a little over two months of time. Um, payroll report rather than a pay stub is perfectly acceptable. Just make clear, just make it clear that we can trace uh, that these funds uh, are tied to this uh, and that the amounts match what we would expect to see and that the employee names are clearly visible and that these funds are not uh, supplanting uh, but are supplementing their original pay. I'm the only employee in my family daycare and it was deposited in my account. What do I need to upload? And so you need to provide documentation that you are retaining those funds uh, as a provider, as your own award. So you either need to write that as a check uh, to yourself uh, and show us uh, accordingly. If the employee was credentialed at the time of payment but is leaving at the end of the school year, do we need to refund the money to MSDE? If the employee was credentialed at the time of payment uh, and they're still there when you're receiving these funds, they've met, you know, especially if it's not a new hire, they've met their six months, you should pay those funds. They are eligible to receive them. If they have left before you've received the funds, uh, you do not need to pay those out. These are retention bonuses. At that point, it becomes up to the provider. Uh, have all funds been given out? Uh, those funds have been processed. So if you have a program director uh, having a challenge, again, reach out to grants.msde at maryland.gov. I'm a home daycare. Do I report my social security number or my tax ID? So again, this is your center's tax ID number. Uh, if for some reason you don't have an EIN for your for your license, you know, certainly always recommend having for tax and protection purposes a uh, separate EIN, but if, if you're operating your, your center under your personal information, uh, that's what you would put there. But uh, yes, it is the tax ID number associated with your center as it reported in our systems, or if it's helpful, look at the W-9 that you've submitted to us. That's going to be the same tax ID number you want to use for that. Can you please repeat what the supporting documentation is if there's not requirement to submit the credentials? Yes, pay stub, copy of check, specifically to the staff to whom you have paid. We need to see that you took this money and gave the right amount to the right staff. Uh, otherwise, we will ask for those funds back. Can you 1099 the teachers? You certainly can 1099 the teachers. For those of you administering these funds, uh, 
kind of this point alludes to it. These are subject to regular tax and withholding. We have, though, given all of you pretty wide latitude with how you want to administer this. And so uh, as you're doing that, if you want to do it as part of payroll and uh, have all the regular taxes apply in that case, you certainly can. If you are submitting this and doing this uh, and want to administer it directly and then give them a 1099, you can do that as well. Uh, in general, uh, we cannot give more tax advice than that, um, but we as a state agency, so you're going to want to make sure that you consult a tax professional. Always consult your local tax professional, knowing that these funds are subject to tax and holding. Uh, we are 10 months center July 3 to 1st. Is there an extension on filing the House Bill 1100 information? Uh, please submit a formal request uh, if that's the case. Uh, hello, is this session for employees? I am a teacher. Uh, this session is for the child care providers and submitting all required reports and information for administering the program. I am a sole family child care provider. I was awarded the funds. What file do I need to upload? You need to show us that you paid yourself, right? Because we need to see that evidence that you took these funds. You paid yourself either through check or however that is uh, and send that our way. So what if you don't have staff and it's only you? Same question, right? You, how would you, you we need to see that you have indeed paid yourself. Um, if your personal bank account is the same thing as your business bank account, uh, I would recommend writing a check to your. Um, I, I can't imagine that that would be the case, but if for some reason it is, uh, I would recommend writing a check to yourself uh, out of that account and to demonstrate uh, that that is being delivered to you as the eligible awardee. Uh, I'm not sure if this session is for me. Uh, I don't know either, Brianna, um, but uh, I hope you're in, it's helpful in some way. Uh, I have home daycare and no employee. I am the provider and only employee. I got $1,000. So again, you need to show how you've paid yourself. Are you on payroll for your center? Did you pay yourself that way? Show us that. Write a check to yourself. You can do that as well. One of my employees was previously credentialed but expired. She had resubmitted and did not have the required training for her previous level. She's called and left a message and it was called her. She's willing to drop to a lower level. How can she get her application process? So again, level doesn't matter here, right? Any level of credential is enough. So if it's just a matter of dropping a, a level, it's a boot point. They're credentialed. Credentialing is not on a time basis. Now telling staff additional training is required. How is there lack of time so as not to penalize staff? Uh, again, um, you know, we've given notice more than a year uh, on this uh, coming into the fall. And so, you know, if you still have a challenge, you're more than welcome to reach out, as I noted earlier, to credentialing. Feel free to CC me and uh, justin.dayhoff at maryland.gov and the grants office, grants.msde at maryland.gov. And we can certainly uh, collaborate with the team over there uh, if that's a concern and we can consider that on a case by case basis. If we owe some funds back because staff are no longer employed, will you take money out of our account? You will have to send it in. We will invoice you for those funds. Email the funds. Uh, the email address is already written down. It's been in all the correspondence that we've sent out for this. So go to your emails. It's in there, grants.msde at maryland.gov. I'll also drop it in chat here at the end. If we have multiple centers with multiple license numbers in one EIN, do we list all separated by a comma? Nope. Again, as it says right here, just provide your license number. Uh, if you're provided with one EIN and multiple sites, just provide the license number to which the funds were awarded because we group those by the center by the by license. Uh, please repeat the website for the bonuses that have not been received. I believe you mean the email. I just mentioned that, but I'll drop it in chat at the end here. Uh, will the report be sent to us? Yes, yeah, so we'll send this out, like I said, on May 29th uh, with the up, uh, write up and the deadline. Is there a deadline to use the funds for recruitment and retention? Uh, we would expect those funds to be used uh, by the end of calendar year 2023. So uh, 2023. Uh, so that would be December 31st, 2023. When do we send, uh, who do we send additional questions regarding administrative uh, expenses, you can send those to grants.msde at maryland.gov. 
how do we get that form to submit everything on that website? Uh, you will get this form. We're going to email it out to you directly. So I'm going to consolidate this as soon as we finish that second session on May 29th. I'm going to list all of the reporting deadlines, give that breakout of what that supporting documentation is, send you this link and get it all right over to you. We just want to make sure that we share this here. And again, with everybody who joins on the 29th, we'll send that right on out. And like I said, you'll have this for about 60 days, a little more than that. Uh, how do you return the funds that have not been used again? We will invoice for that. Uh, do we have to cut a check to a provider for hiring bonus? Uh, yeah, well, if yes, you do. As I said, I was surprised to hear your reference to 30, 60 day time for at the start of this incredible incentive of advocates and providers asked about the impact on the credentialing team. Uh, it would be helpful to clear about this expanded time range. OK, is it too late to apply for the credential? Likely is given that it's May 23rd uh, and June 30th, 2023 is the statutory requirement to have the credential. Uh, on application title of submitter, would I use title teacher or owner? Uh, whatever your title is that you're submitting the form as. Whatever submitted form as. Uh, forms were processed uh, this spring. So, uh, find, uh, the funds were processed this spring, so do um, Again, if, if you don't have them, reach out to grants.msd at maryland.gov. If applications for credential were submitted, but no response was received, can staff still receive funding? No, I mean, uh, the staff has to have a credential listed in our system under their name in order to be eligible. Uh, that includes providers, right? As a provider, you also have to have, of course, a Maryland Child Care uh, credential, not Excels, but a credential for the Maryland Child Care Credential Program if you're claiming that as well. I'm a licensed family provider, just me. I didn't think I would receive this grant due to not getting all my credential hours since I moved so I'm at home, uh, but I got to check. What do I do? You will submit this report. You will note that you weren't able to receive the the um, the credential in time, right? This That means you would have checked in the application that you were going to have it. Uh, and so if that has changed, you can do that here. You can also email us directly. If an employee does not qualify now, would I be able to add them again for the next round? Sure. Uh, if if they will meet that, uh, um, you can. However, the credential piece does not change. So one thing that will be different with the next round is that the credential deadline will have passed. And so when we reopen that, they'll at the time of application need to already possess that credential. So if they don't have that credential and didn't have it by June 30th, that still does apply. If it's somebody who wasn't credentialed, but, uh, you know, or did get it or somebody you left off or there was an error in your application and they would have been eligible, you can absolutely include them. Hiring bonuses issued to new employees should be shown where on the document. Uh, awarded staff under awarded staff. Uh, you should have received it already, so if you did not, again, reach out to grants.msd at maryland.gov and they can check on that for you. Uh, no, higher dates cannot be fixed on your application. So uh, again, as we said, you cannot edit a submitted application uh, because in fairness to everybody, because it is a first come first serve program uh, that you we cannot do that. Uh, I seem to recall there was going to be $500 given to centers to offset administrative efforts. Is this only for new hires or even the credential bonus? Uh, those funds were released with this award. Those were only for those were per employee. They were per employee who was hired on or after July 1st, 2022, and they were per employee who was hired on or after July 1st, 2022, and who worked at least 30 hours per week. It was a different hours requirement, and so there were many employees who did not meet that uh, to trigger that amount, but that was already released. That was incorporated into the award. I'll post the email at the bottom here uh, again. Uh, employees who did not make the credential in this round reapply. No, they wouldn't be able to apply at that point, right? The, the credential deadline won't change with the new round uh, of uh, opening windows. I received $1,000 as a child care provider owner. I overlooked the credentialing. Can I request for extension of my credentialing? Uh, no, you cannot. That is definition in law. That is not a department decision. It's in the law. Does it matter if we paid ourselves weeks after receiving the funds? No, it does not, uh, but we will still need to see that you did indeed pay it. Otherwise, that'll fall into the collection invoice for us. I'm a sole home family provider, so it doesn't matter if we deposited the check in April and write ourselves a check in May. Nope, does not. We just need to see that you wrote that check. Uh, can they resend the forms we need to complete? Uh, well, we haven't sent this form yet, so no, uh, because I haven't sent it yet, but I'll send this out on May 29th. Uh, I'm confirming that the center is not required to pay taxes. If we do, we can use the administrative awards to cover this expense. These funds are subject to tax and withholding. Uh, 
It is up to you to decide how you administer that. If you administer it as part of your regular payroll, that would likely incur regular payroll taxes. If you administer it as a payout in a 1099, you could do that differently. Again, that's up to your discretion in either case, and in both cases, we advise that you contact your local tax professional. We are not able to give tax advice. When I write a check to myself, should I put a paid for reason? Certainly help and make it easier for us on the uh, on on the um, on the processing of that documentation. What if we got the money and then cashed the state check at the bank and had cash back from that and then just spent it on daycare stuff? Do we need to show proof of cashing the check or can I write one to myself still and just use that even if not deposited or not cash? We don't really need to see in terms of uh, the the check uh, ordering or anything like that. Ultimately, I the department, right? What what the team's going to be looking at here when they're reviewing these is does the check show that you paid the person or people who were assigned those awards? That's what we need to see. How you get there, it's up to you. I received a letter stating they'd be granted the funds. There's another letter saying I would not receive the funds. Uh I, I would email us directly. I, you know, I can't comment off the top of my head what that would look like. So uh, do email your specific case uh, to the team at grants.msd. I'll drop it at the bottom. Uh, to the grant email, most of those responses are going within 24 hours uh, and or the next business day. We have teachers whose credentials expired in March. They resubmitted in March, but have not received the renewal back. The recording says May 10th, but they still have not received it. Uh, feel free to email uh, them and CC me and I can uh, check on that as I've mentioned before. Uh, I'll put the emails again at the bottom here. Paid half of the amounts to my staff and I'm waiting for the other half when they'll be credentialed, which is part, especially for those new hires, exactly how that's supposed to go. Uh, you want the, the, the full amount should be reflected here, right? So anything that you have paid, should be reflected in the awarded. Any that is not paid should be in the non awarded. If you have a staff member who only they were a part of the new hire group where you have that 500, $500 split, uh, you may have a staff member who is paid the 500, but then who's also paid, not paid the other 500, and you would indicate that here accordingly in the form. You can't see what I'm typing, but um, let me share my screen so you can. You would indicate that here that you paid it to, for example, use my name, Justin Dayhoff, but that you also did not pay. Credential, right? So you would report them in both lines in that case. You'd report them in both lines in that case. OK, next question here. I paid half of the amounts. Nope, I already got that one. I had an incomplete application. When do I get to correct it? Unfortunately, again, you do not. Uh, applications were one time, first come, first serve. Because of that, there's no editing submitted applications. What about an employee who is not paid for? Uh, I've submitted a question of grants at MSDE. Feel free to CC me. Again, the team knows that they are to respond to those within 24 hours of the next business day. So feel free to reply to grants at MSD and add me to the thread, and I can certainly jump in. Will employees who receive this bonus uh, be eligible when it reopens? They will not. One time only for uh, an individual. I have a teacher whose credentials lapsed a while ago before the funds were received. Does she have to renew her credential? Yes, they need to have the credential. They need to have had it on June 30th of last year. Uh, if they were uh, an employee who was working for you before July 1st, or if they're a new employee, they need to have it on or by June 30th of this year. The last day you can submit your credentials application has likely passed if you're looking to have that in place by June 30th. I would imagine that that is already over if you were looking to have that by June 30th and you don't yet ready. If an employee was on payroll prior to July 4th but did not receive a credential, they're still eligible to receive 500. If an employee was on payroll prior to July 1st uh, but did not receive a credential, they are not. So the way that the law is written, that 500-500 split only applies to new staff who were hired on or after July 1st, 2022. I, as a provider, my employer required to complete certain continuing education requirements to keep our child care license current. Does the completion of those meet the credentialing requirement? It does not. You need a credential from the Maryland Child Care Credential Program in order to meet the child care credential requirement as defined in the law for this bonus. I have an employee that was hired July 2022. She's credentialed and I paid her the bonus as a new hire. She should be included on this report. Yes, all employees who you've paid 
and then those who you were awarded, but who you did not pay. All of those should be included. Uh, payments were sent out uh, earlier this spring. I use direct pay to pay myself. Would it be the same or should I get a check? Uh, even if you use direct pay, there's still a digital copy of that. So you could submit a digital copy of that. MSDE will not send uh, 1099s for this. Um, you will be responsible for that for your teams. Um, was some of the money allowed to be used as a bonus for new hire staff and advertising? Yes, uh, if you were eligible for that and received it, which you would have been notified of in your award documentation. How much is awarded to the provider for the hiring process per employee? If eligibility criteria was met, that was $500 per employee. Again, for returning the funds that were not used, we will invoice for those. Um, we will invoice for those. We will do that this summer. The last date of spending funds on any of the other discretionary uh, hiring uh, is December 31st, 2023, the end of this calendar year. Uh, yes, you can write yourself a check and upload that check as evidence. I have an employee whose credential expires June 24th. Uh, yes, uh, they would be credentialed because they're credentialed in this. Yes, they would meet the credential requirement. Staff who've worked for more than a year, they had to have a credential by June 22 or June 2023. Yes, is the answer to that. The law says that if they were hired on or before July 1st, 2022, the staff needed to either have a credential as of June 30th, 2022, or get one by June 30th, 2023. Can we apply only for the hiring bonus portion on the next round? No, you cannot. I just want to confirm one of your prior answers for round two. Employees will have to be already credentialed to be eligible. Correct. Yes because the June 30th, 2023 date is in law. I'm a family child care provider and I received $2,000. I only put myself down. I want to know if there was an error. Yes, that probably was. This may be the case where you listed uh, twice or submitted a duplicate application uh, that wasn't flagged correctly. Those are the cases as well that the department would invoice for that back this summer. Staff who are currently receiving this bonus, they needed their credential by last June or is this June? It so either it, for staff who are hired before July 1st, 2022, they needed to have their credential either last June 30th, 2022, or get one by this June 30th, 2023. If you were hired on or after July 1st, 2022, you need to have a credential on or by June 30th, 2023. Uh, yes, again, we'll email this out with all these instructions uh, and the deadlines uh, all on May 20, after I should say May 29th. So it'll either come later that day or shortly thereafter that next day. Um, with regard to the, oh my goodness, uh, because that is a holiday. So, and, and I know some of you've asked me, so if some of your colleagues are asking, or if you get off of this call, some of your colleagues are asking, oh my goodness, why this can't be right? It's 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 May 29th, what, what, what the heck is that? Yes, that that is right though. Uh, you know, we're trying to, especially with these kinds of meetings, uh, you know, we fully recognize that you are, uh, especially many of you and uh, home providers, family care providers, um, your hands are full uh, and I, you know, it's probably not fair of you to ask you to pay attention to this uh, while kids are napping. Uh, it's also a safety issue. And so to the extent that we can, whenever we're giving these sessions, we are trying to provide them at times that might make it easier for you and your colleagues um, to attend. Uh, and so this is one of those examples. May 29th is another. Yes, it is a state holiday. Uh, I'll be here anyway um, for this. Um, we will be doing that, recognizing that most providers will be closed. Uh, our hope is that that morning before anybody heads off to any barbecuing or anything like that, uh, since you don't have children in care that day or since you're less likely to have children in care that day, it makes it at least accessible to all of you and your colleagues to, to attend. So, um, and again, even if not, we'll be posting both that session and the sessions recording online. And we'll be releasing that written guidance right after that. And you'll have 60 days for this. So uh, hopefully all of those things help. Uh, and if somebody, you know, and again, if people uh, are writing in, if there's something we can always change or adapt, we, we, we do try and, and honor that. I just hired new staff this April 2023. Can I apply for her? So when we reopen, uh, if they have their credential by June 30th of this year, then that would be a staff that you might want to, to include. They would be eligible for the new hire portion. Um, regarding staff member who did not new can she reapply next year if she meets the next deadline there wouldn't be another deadline for the credential right that's the one 
thing that's not changing, right? Because by law, that credential has to be in place by June 30th, 2023 at, at most. Uh, if you did not cash the check and after this meeting, you realize that your staff does not qualify, can you just return the check? No, you can't um, because we do need to account for that. So you're going to want to deposit that and we will invoice you for the amount that we need back. Uh, so long as staff had a Maryland credential for years and they're waiting for the new certificate from renewal, that's fine. Or if they have to renew their credential, that, yeah, the, in those cases, those staff are are, are going to probably get picked up uh, when we when we run that report. Do we send a current pay stub or an old one? So the pay stub that you're sending is not just a regular pay stub, right? The pay stub that you're sending is the exact pay stub where you took these funds and awarded them to the employee. So this the pay stub that we need to see is you paying your employee this award as they're eligible. So it's not just a regular pay stub for your staff. Uh, to prove that their work that they work for you. We're not asking for that. We're asking for essentially the proof, it, the documentation that you paid the awarded staff. That's what we're looking for there. That's what we're looking for. Okay, I'm also going to drop this into chat now. And CC Justin Dayhoff at Maryland.gov. I'm putting both into our chat. Pardon me, I missed the first one. I put a comma on that. Let me retype that, please. There we go. All right. All right. Uh, what about yourself? So again, if you're paying yourself, same thing. We need to see you write a check to yourself um, so that you have that. So you can write it out of your own account. And and I loved someone earlier asked about put it put in the reason on the check. Absolutely go for that. We just need to see that you took those funds that you received and you paid yourself, uh, right? I mean, in theory, you know, uh, again, I would imagine most of you have separate accounts for personal and, and your center. So you, this is how you would, would transfer those. And that way it's also recorded uh, for our audit purposes. No, a check paid to yourself. Uh, so remember, this is both for employees and for providers, right? And so if you are a provider and, and you're the provider and you're the employee, th this is a case where you'd be paying yourself essentially. And so there are certainly circumstances where that would be the case. Thank you for walking us through this process and the opportunity to offer, but oh, well, we are happy to be here to serve. All right, everybody, we're about at that time. We powered through a whole heck of a lot stew on this if we hang up and you have additional questions in like 10 minutes email us come back on the 29th wait until this guidance comes out see if you get it and then email us whatever you want we're here and we are always grateful for you um a new staff had 1500 beside her name. What is that for? So that is probably going to be for, especially since a new staff, that's going to be that include that extra $500 uh, for the hiring uh, incentive that goes to the provider uh, that you can use. That's what that would be for. If I write myself a check, taxes won't be taken. So we need to go through payroll. Could Christina, again, so talk to your tax professional here, but you could also issue yourself a 1099. Do it that way. Do it that way. All right, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and close down chat here and close this out again. Our sincere thanks to all of you uh, for everything you do each and every day. Uh, that's not something we just say. Uh, we mean that. Um, I mean that. Uh, so, so grateful. Um, and as a dad of a two, two and a half year old, six year old, uh, even more so. So thank you all so, so much. Hope you have a wonderful evening. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Reach out anytime and uh, do, do take care. Have a good one, everybody.